Hello and welcome to this next topic, topic 24 of OCR A-level chemistry. This is lattice enthalpy. Now lattice enthalpy is a measure of the strength of the ionic bonding in a lattice and it's defined as the enthalpy change which accompanies the formation of one mole of an ionic lattice from gaseous ions. And the things which affect lattice enthalpy are the ionic size, or the ionic radius, and the ionic charge. The greater the charge is, the greater the lattice enthalpy is. And the smaller the size of the ion, the greater the lattice enthalpy is. And we need to talk about the ways in which you calculate lattice enthalpy. And there's two major ways. The first one I'm going to call born harbour cycle. And the second one is an enthalpy cycle, which uses dissolving in water as a way of calculating it. And I'll go through them one at a time, starting with born harbour cycle. And throughout these explanations, I'm going to use one example, and that's calcium chloride. I'm going to show you the two different ways of calculating the lattice enthalpy for calcium chloride. Okay, so the born harbour cycle for calcium chloride. This first thing I've drawn is the energy change that I'm trying to calculate. It's the energy change when gaseous ions, so calcium 2 plus and chloride 1 minus, two of those, both as gases, form one mole of calcium chloride solid. So this arrow is the one I'm trying to work out. That's the lattice enthalpy for calcium chloride. It's going to be negative because when bonds form, that's exothermic. So we're looking for a big exothermic number because ionic lattices are strong. And a Born Harbor cycle is essentially a glorified Hesse's law diagram, where instead of going straight one to the other, we have to find a different route. And to do that, we need to use some other enthalpy changes, some of which you've come across before, some of which you haven't. So we're going to use enthalpy changes of formation, so you should know the definition for those. Enthalpy changes of ionisation, so ionisation energies, and enthalpy changes for electron affinity. The one you don't know already is enthalpy changes for atomization. And enthalpy change of atomization is enthalpy change which makes one mole of atoms, so gaseous atoms. And we're going to combine all of those different enthalpy changes to get from the solid ionic lattice to the gaseous ions in a different way other than going via the lattice enthalpy. So the way that we link it to calcium chloride, first of all, is with the enthalpy change of formation. So we're going to add in the enthalpy change of formation of calcium chloride, and that's from elements in their standard state. Okay, so that is calcium as a solid, and then chlorine as a diatomic gaseous molecule. And the enthalpy change of formation of calcium chloride is minus 795 kilojoules per mole. Now the next step is to atomize all of the things we've got here. So instead of having calcium as a solid, we need gaseous calcium atoms. And for that, I need the atomization enthalpy for calcium. All of this data will be supplied for you. So you don't have to worry about trying to calculate that. There will just be a table of information that you need. And so here, the only difference is instead of saying calcium solid, it says calcium gas. And the enthalpy change for this process is plus 178 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so we've atomized calcium. Now we have to atomize the chlorine. So it's in a molecule at the minute. We need to get it as separate atoms. And so to do that, we do twice the atomization enthalpy for chlorine, which is 124 for one. So we need twice that. So two times 124 is 248. Okay, so the difference here, instead of being a Cl2 molecule, it's now with two Cl atoms. The next step, is we've got to get ions. So calcium first has to lose electrons, and that's ionization energy. So I need to do the first and second ionization enthalpy for calcium. And that has an enthalpy change of 590 kilojoules per mole. Then we need to do the second ionization energy. And the second ionization enthalpy for calcium is 1145. There's only one step left. Getting from here to here means we need to add one electron to each of the chlorine atoms to make two chloride ions, and that's the electron affinity for chlorine, the first one. But there's two chlorine atoms, and you get two chloride ions, so it would be twice the electron affinity for chlorine. And so now we're almost done. We have a complete born harbour cycle, and we've got all the numbers filled in. All we need to do is calculate the entry change going from there to there, without going that way, but going this way. So the calculation will be, if you do it the same way as I said in the Hess's Law video, you go against an arrow, you do the opposite sign. So this would be 2 times positive 349 minus 1145 minus 590 minus 2 times 124 minus 778 
this one is with the arrow, so minus 795, should give you the answer to that end pitching. And that comes out to be minus 2258 kilojoules per mile. And so for a Bourne Harbour cycle, these are the steps. You have the formation and the lattice enthalpy. Both of those forming one mole of calcium chloride. To get from formation to gaseous ions, you need to first of all atomize, so you've got all atoms, then ionize, so you've got positive ions and electrons, and then electron affinity to get the negative ions. And then once you've done that, you have a complete Born Harbor cycle. You can only do it for simple ionic things. Often you get like a sulfate here, you couldn't do it for that because we have sulfur and oxygen separate. So you can't do it for compound anion. But any simple anion like chloride, bromide, iodide, oxide, nitride, any of those negative ions which are just elements with extra electrons, you can do quite easily. There's a different way of doing it for compound ions, but only if the ionic lattice is soluble in water. Turns out calcium chloride is soluble in water, so I'm going to show you how to do it with calcium chloride. Just know that it works with other soluble ionic acids as well, even if they've got compound ions. Now to do it the other way, I need to introduce a couple of terms. That is enthalpy change of solution and enthalpy change of hydration. Enthalpy change of solution is the enthalpy change which accompanies the dissolving of one mole of an ionic lattice in water. The enthalpy change of hydration is the enthalpy change which occurs when you dissolve one mole of a gaseous ion in water. And so you might be able to see where we're going with this. If we know the enthalpy change of hydration for these ions and the enthalpy change of solution for this ionic lattice, then we can combine those to make a new enthalpy cycle. And this would be that enthalpy cycle. So I've added in this bit, which is aqueous ions. And so there's two ways to get to that, from the ionic solid, in which case it would be a solution enthalpy, or from gaseous ions, in which case it's the enthalpy of hydration of calcium 2+, plus, plus twice the enthalpy change of hydration of chloride ions, because there's two chloride ions. And again, you'll be given tables of data for this, so you just have to select that and put it in. Incidentally, the enthalpy change of hydration has the same factors which affect it as lattice enthalpy does. So smaller ions with greater charges also have a greater hydration enthalpy. And that's why calcium, with its 2 plus charge and smaller size, has a much more negative hydration enthalpy than chloride does. So, so again, like a Hess's law diagram, I'm trying to get from here to here, but without going down that arrow. So it's minus 1650, minus 2 times 364, and then so I'm going against that arrow, it'll be plus 120. And again, that comes out to be minus 2258. And so it doesn't matter which enthalpy cycle you use, the Born Harbor cycle, or this one that uses solutions and hydration enthalpies, they both give you the same answer for the lattice enthalpy because that doesn't change. And that is it for lattice enthalpies. Thank you for watching and I hope you can join me for the next one. Goodbye.